Before directing such classics as The French Connection and The Exorcist, William Freakin made one of the most powerful documentaries you've never heard of. On March 20th, 1953, five black men robbed a meatpacking plant in Chicago's Union Stockyards. Their getaway went awry, and a security guard was shot and killed. Within a week, all five men were arrested. Four received jail sentences and were eventually paroled. The fifth, Paul Crump, then 22, confessed under questionable interrogation tactics, then later retracted, only to be convicted and sentenced to death in the electric chair. For nine years, Paul Crump has tried to tell his story. Either nobody listened, or nobody cared, or nobody believed. Did you have anything to do with killing that guard at Libby's? I most certainly did not. Nothing at all? Positively nothing. Where were you? What did you do the day somebody killed somebody else out at Libby's? I was with a woman. I was in a woman's bed. Where? At the exact Ooh. time that this thing was happening. After 14 stays of execution, Crump met Freakin in the Cook County Jail, then just a local TV director. Freakin so believed in Crump's innocence and his worth as a human being that he took to the streets and made this film to appeal for Crump's return to society. This was the first film I made, and I had no idea how to make a film. There were just three of us, really, who made the film, and the cameraman, whose name is Bill Butler, later became a very successful cameraman in the United States. He wound up filming Jaws and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I confessed and you would confess and anybody else that was in, that was in the position that I was in would confess. And as a result of that, you've spent nine years right on, in this That's jail, right. Is that right? waiting to be right executed. Here, right here and no one believing uh, a fragment of what I say. No one cared, really, because no one knew the first one that's come out here to interview me. This one young guy, I think he's innocent, and the warden thinks he's innocent. I'd like to meet this man. And he said, why? Why, why would you like to meet him? He's going to die in the electric chair in six months. I said, I don't know. I, I work in television. Maybe I can do something. And he said, there's nothing that can be done except a pardon by the governor of Illinois. The People vs. Paul Crump was instrumental in moving then-Governor Otto Kerner to commute Crump's death sentence mere days before he was scheduled to be executed. Kerner sent a letter to William Freakin, which he still has to this day. In the letter, Kerner states, I was extremely moved by your film, and I've decided to parole Crump to a life in prison instead of execution. And the governor wrote to me saying, in spite of the recommendation of my parole and pardon board, I'm going to pardon this man's life. So this was the first thing I ever made on film. And I thought, my God, what a powerful medium film is. After 40 years in prison, he was released in 1993, but struggled with alcohol and mental illness that would compel his sister to get an order of protection against him. He died of lung cancer at the age of 72. Freakin stated, he had been incarcerated for so long, he couldn't make it on the outside. He couldn't make the adjustment. Freakin states the People vs. Paul Crump was the only memorable thing he did for more than eight years in Chicago television. The film achieved what he wanted. It helped earn Crump his freedom. It also gave him a career. The film, which earned film festival honors, caught the attention of legendary documentarian David Walper. Freakin then moved to Los Angeles, and the rest is history. And you wonder about God. And you wonder if perhaps in man's uh, more or less taking over the role of God, if he hasn't completely destroyed everything that uh, you have been taught that God believe, that God stand for. And this will make you a little cynical. And this will make you a fight to uh, sustain a belief in mankind a little harder, a belief in God, a little more hard. 